Hi guys, Sarah here, and today I'm gonna to give you a more in-depth look into how I structure a self-contained adapted PE class. I've been doing this for 12 years now, and AP is all I do. I've traveled, I've been in one building, I've had self-contained classes, I've had push-in classes, you name it, I probably had it as far as the abilities of students. So this particular video goes out to Lauren. So she emailed me a little while ago She's a first year adaptive PE teacher. She's got a couple of self-contained classes that she teaches every day for 45 minutes. So I am shouting out to you, Lauren, and to all the first year AP teachers. Now, one of Lauren's biggest concerns was that the students have such a low attention span that she's having to do six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 different things in one 45 minute class, which sounds exhausting. And I've been there too. I've done that before and it is exhausting. So the biggest thing that you can do is set that routine. Now, what does that look like? I've been using this for many, many years and it works. So here is my routine for a self-contained adaptive PE class. You need to grab those IEPs and you need to figure out what works for that particular student. So you're looking at the physical section, you're looking at the PT notes, the OT, the speech, the behavior management, that's a big one, so that you know what is it that they are doing already in the classroom or they were doing the year before that you can incorporate into your PE class so the student understands the expectations and that you can manage that behavior a little bit better. Now, if you don't have the IEP yet, let's say you get a kid halfway through the year, let's say it's a kid from pre-K coming into kindergarten and you just don't have that information, there's gonna be a little trial and error and I can kind of talk you through a few of the things that I use as far as figuring out what a student needs in order to be successful in my class. So the first part of your routine every day when the kids come in and they're immediately going to start walking on the track. Okay, as soon as I notice that the kids are getting a little bit restless and maybe they're coming to the end of their laps and while they're doing that, I add in equipment on the track. So meaning they're walking on the track or running on the track, however they feel they want to move and then I might add a tunnel. So then they go through the tunnel and then they continue walking on the track and maybe I add a balance beam. So I add all these different obstacles. You know, pro tip, add an obstacle that has to do with one of their IP goals. So as they're going around, you can kind of do a little check and see where they're at with that goal. So maybe the goal is balancing, you know, and you can see how are they doing on that balance beam as they're also participating in that activity. They might have a bouncy ball or a trampoline that they're jumping on a few times. Maybe they're working on counting with me as they jump. And the aides, again, are coming around with those kids and working with those kids. If you need to station an aide at each obstacle, that's also a way to do it because the aides are there at the obstacle to help support each one of those kids. Now, in some cases, the aides are assigned to a specific student. So that might be something that you have to talk to the special ed teacher about just to say, hey, is it possible for them to kind of mix and match during my class? Because things tend to get a little chaotic, they get a little nutty, and it's nice to be able to have that flexibility with the staff. Notice that the kids are getting fatigued again. I'll start to move the equipment out of the way and I will play a song and it will be the same song every time we do circle time, every single time. And I do this because then that student, that's the cue that it's time to transition. And that's something that is routine. Now, what I'll do is I'll get some carpet squares out. That's typically what I use for circle time. You could use poly spots, you could use spots that are on the floor. You could put little X's down, whatever works for you. Maybe their names go on the floor, maybe pictures of their faces, their favorite animals, again. So that goes in a circle. Usually I'll do it, I might have an aide do it. If the students can do it, the students will do it. And we'll put them down and we have a seat. We finish out that first song and then we do other songs that the kids are used to. And I might add rhythm sticks with it. I might do bean bags or scarves. Now, if you have older students, you might want to do a stretching routine. You might want to do a strengthening routine. Typically around that last song, the kids are engaged, the aides are engaged, I will get up and I will start to get the group activity together. And I like doing parachute. One of my favorites is the scarfs and the fan, and that is on one of my other YouTube videos, so you should check that out. The kids absolutely love it. They're all engaged, and it really helps me. And the reason it helps me is because as they're engaged in that group activity, that's when I start setting up my stations, which is the next activities are gonna be my station work. Now those stations, we wanna keep fairly close together. If the station is across the other side of the gym, you are going to probably have a hard time getting that student from one station to the other. You're probably gonna see some behaviors. That student might run. 
that student might pull a fire alarm. So if I know the IEP goal for one of my students is throwing and catching, that's going to be one of my stations because then I can collect that data on that student. I have a lot of really cool ways to collect data as well through Google Forms that puts it into a really nice package for you. So it's very easy to read. It's very easy to convey those results to parents or the special ed department or during your CSE meeting. So if you're interested in that, leave a comment below and I'll be sure to make a video on one of those. When I have about five or six minutes left, I do the same closing every time. And what I'll do is I'll get out a TV. I know it's a TV. I'll put on something really calming and I'll turn the lights down and I'll let the kids sit on their carpet squares. After the video is done, I'll usually say three, two, one, all done. Maybe I'll say one more minute and then we're done. The lights come on, the students put the squares into the bin, they get a stamp if they'd like one, and then they walk out. And that is what I do each and every class. If you'd like to hear more about anything specific about what I do for Adaptive PE, again, please leave a comment so I know, and that way I can make some more videos that you guys love. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.